So I slept in my truck last night. That's not how this trip was supposed to go. Let's go back and see how it all played out. <laughs> Well, thanks a lot for clicking on my video, guys. Appreciate that support as always. Me and Wendell here is uh, heading out. It was an early morning for us. We get up uh, around five something. By the time we got out and hit the road, it was probably, I don't know, about 6.30. And we drove all the way up here through uh, St. John, New Brunswick, Port City, and uh, came out to the end here where this big lighthouse is called Cape Spencer. And we are heading out for uh, camping trip overnight right on the coast of Bay of Funday. It should be a great trip and I hope you guys stay with us. If you do like the video make sure to uh, give it a thumbs up, leave me a comment. I always get back to everybody. Uh, consider subscribing and uh, let's get to the video. Alright guys, just about to take off here. Last look at the uh, Cape Spencer Lighthouse. Wendell, he's got his rec specs on as always. Hey buddy. Uh, you see some, I don't know if it'll show up on the GoPro, but there's some uh, big oil tanker and, and uh, container ships out there waiting to come into the port of St. John or the LNG oil refinery plant. And we're going to take off, go for a little camping trip. Alright, so we just turned on to W Beach Road. Don't know if that came up on the camera, but there was a, looked to be a hawk just flew off there. Hope I didn't interrupt his breakfast or anything. But yeah, this road uh, is just kind of like a logging slash mining road. I'm told that they were doing some gold mining or prospecting up here before, or a few years ago. I don't know if they still are. And that could have been a spot to park my truck there. But yeah, I'm not going to show too, too much of this road. I just... Uh, Kind of wait till we get up here and get into the trail. I will give a big thank you to a few people for helping me uh, scout out this this trip. First off was I got a really nice email from a guy named Steven. I won't say his last name. I don't know if he's okay with it, but uh, he sent me, uh, told me about this place. He sent me a few videos uh, from YouTube and was telling me how beautiful it was and he wasn't wrong so I watched the videos and one of them was uh, Mountain State Overland and they're from uh, I think they're from they're down in the states for sure they usually drive around in the Appalachian Mountains I uh, watched uh, Northbound Expeditions another uh, overlanding channel here in New Brunswick Virgil uh, I sent him a message on Instagram he got back to me right away with some pretty good uh, directions so big thank you to Virgil and uh, my buddy uh, Hub City Overlanding Ryan he uh, he probably gave me the most help I would say with directions he uh, I'm sure it was probably annoying him but he really helped me with uh, the route and what to be looking for and stuff he came down here with the Hub City crew you guys should definitely check out those channels. I'll probably end up posting them down in the description. Just take a look down there. You can see some a lake off in the distance. There's a couple decent lakes back here. I'd love to maybe do a little bit of exploring and see what we can uh, find maybe tomorrow if we get out of here early enough. There's a lake right there, and then another lake over there. And you look back and you can see the uh, oil refinery and some ships.
So yeah, so far the trail's been pretty good. Just a uh, few little mud puddles and stuff. The only directions I was given to come here, pretty much, what everyone says was when you see the meth shack. Now I'm guessing that's the meth shack. It's called the Lone Spruce. Tom Clark. Oh, cool. Spelt the same way as me. Uh, yeah. He said go right, so maybe we'll go check out that. Let Wendell stretch his legs. Ooh. All right, so it's called the Lone Spruce. Probably because of this tree. There's definitely more than one here, but cool name. And uh, live life to the fullest, Tom Clark. So he must have passed away. Mike Harnish Poker Run 2019. Travis Thomas 85 to 2023. Geez, just a year younger than me. Cool. Bunch of people writing their names. So this is a pretty rough warming shack. I don't know if this is just something that was kind of put out here for people to come party at, but <laughs> ketchup and saw. This is a hatchet and an axe, or sorry, a hatchet and a saw. It's cooking stuff. Cool. <laughs> I think there's a lot of parties going on here. All right, distant down a little rock shelf thing. You can really tell that the trail closes in now. So far you would have no issue getting like a, a Tacoma or, a, or even a stock Jeep all through here, no problem at all. As long as you're okay with uh, maybe getting a little bit of brush rub on the sides and pinstriping. Oh, we've got a little go around here but it looks freaking all muddy tore up and this looks just like water so I don't know if maybe this is really deep or not I'll inch my way in and we'll see what happens there's usually go arounds for a reason another frog there actually I can see the bottom here it doesn't look too bad at all And that go around looks like she'd be pretty greasy. <sighs> this is pretty rocky down through here. It amazes me that the uh, trucks and stuff can even fit through here. It's so tight and narrow. I can start to feel a breeze. Generally means you're starting to get close to the water. I've been really itching to get out. Uh, I actually just came back from a family camping trip in Fun Day Park. We uh, did the Authentics thing. It's like a big 
tent uh, with wooden walls, but tent roof and stuff. Really fun. It was calling my son's second birthday. We went there with some friends. It was actually one of the girls' birthday too, same same weekend. So it was a lot of fun. Didn't do any filming for that, just kind of enjoyed it. Oh, this is really cool. Really trail that's really washed out and worn down. I'm sure it would have running water in the spring. So cool. Reminds me of going to Goose Creek and stuff. I mean it is the same coastline. I'm not terribly terribly far from that area Martin's Head and Goose Creek this is not exactly where I thought I was going to come out I remember watching a YouTube video of a guy in like an old Land Rover an old one he came through here and, and that thing Yeah, check out these rocks. You really smell the ocean now. <laughs> I wonder why. Oh, I just walked around the corner. There's no trail back up anywhere. So, uh, I'll have to turn around and go back. There's a few other trails up here. We'll see if we can find our way. Whoa. I think we'll be safe here. Man, I don't know what I was thinking. I came right up here. There's a huge like washout and log. Uh, I should have just came up the outside here. I think it was a better line. But uh, oh well, I'll remember for next time. Of course, uh, I was looking at it on the camera there. It doesn't look as bad. But I uh, just wanted to uh, make sure I was being safe there. I didn't. I'm out here by myself, like I said, I only got my dog. And I'd hate for something to happen and put myself or him in danger for just being stupid or maybe not doing the safe move. So I think I was supposed to go this way. Oh, that's a nice birch bark there. Whoa, that drops off. I'm in low and four-wheel drive, so it should be fine. So, 
There's a couple of little camping spots here. Can't believe no one's come here and cut the grass, eh? Wild. Check out that rock cliff, guys. One lone, <laughs> gnarly looking spruce tree right there. There's all kinds of seabirds down there. Nice little beach right there. But yeah, this is, this is unreal. So we'll go out and check out the point. So here's the point spot. What a beautiful, beautiful area. Seabirds are out there fishing, so I did bring my rod. Might climb down and take a few casts. There's been uh, numerous shark sightings, lots of great whites and stuff in the Bay of Fundy, so never know what we might see. I might set up here. Pretty gorgeous spot. Alright, is the full pano. Rocks over there. Beauty. There's the grizzly. And there's Wendell. Alright, guys. Well, took a little walk around scouting out this point uh, area. I think I'm going to set up uh, somewhere here. It's a pretty flat. And get a little bit of protection for the trees with the sun and everything. So I think it was a pretty successful trip. Uh, I got a bunch of small stuff, which were some branches that people cleared. Uh, were up off the ground and still not brutal. And then I went for a little walk and I found a standing dead. Looks to be like a spruce tree. The top was uh, pretty punky. But I put it uh, between two trees and did the lever technique and snapped the top off. I got her hooked up with some rope that I keep in my uh, recovery kit. I have it uh, just dragging it back and I'll process it when I get back. <clears throat> there you go. Alright guys, this is something super simple. I'm pretty sure this is called a half hitch. But basically I just have a loop on the end and I just do a half hitch. Just the way you turn the thing to put it over and you pull it tight. The tighter you pull on this, the tighter this holds. Same thing for this one that I just went up through there because I didn't have much to tie it to. But uh, yeah, I just did three. You can do one, you can do two, do as many as you want depending. We use that uh, sometimes for pulling big cables through uh, conduit pipes and stuff at work. But yeah, little like half hitches and works great. No knots, this will come apart really easy. But uh, I think now it's uh, 2.30 in the afternoon, too early for supper. So I'm going to uh, grab the fishing rod, go down on the rocks, take a few casts, see if, uh, see if there's anything down there. We've got high tide right now, so hopefully all the fish are in feeding on the smaller fish. I wish I had a sea rod. I only have my normal rod. I think it has maybe 10 pound tests. So hopefully we don't catch uh, like a sea bass or something that's going to snap off uh, my line pretty easy.
guys came up fish for about a half an hour it's insane like I don't know if it shows up on the thing but there's like a brown bit right there and there's fish jumping like crazy right there I have no clue what they are but they're jumping like nuts there so it could be something small like herring and maybe there's something trying to feed on them like uh, like a striped bass or something like that but you never know I'll keep an eye out I might even go uh, I'm gonna fly the drone around I'll go see if I can get down there with the drone and see if you can see anything there definitely don't want to uh, lose the drone in the water also the waves there were starting to get a little bit a uh, little bit big it doesn't look big from up here but once you're down there <laughs> it's pretty big don't feel like swimming and Wendell climbed down the rocks he wanted to come see me and I don't need him down there so do something else guys well on to the second beer here this is one I've never tried before four rivers uh, made in Bathurst New Brunswick this one's called the nor'easter American pale ale 5% I've had uh, oh you taking some of my firewood give me that stick it smells good hey <laughs> Sometimes he thinks I'm like gonna hit him or something, he freaks right out. Yeah, that's a nice beer. Well, it's been a little while since I finished off my beer there and just letting the fire burn down. And uh, we're gonna have another beer here. This is uh, Flying Boats Brewing, which is Dieppe. Called Kissing Rock Blonde. I'm gonna give her a try. Yeah, I really like the blonde beers. They seem to be uh, just a little uh, easy drinking. Tonight for supper, I'm gonna let the grill warm up there and I'm gonna throw on a couple burgers. I made them nice and uh, thin, a couple slices of cheese, some thinly sliced onions. And I made some homemade Big Mac sauce. Shout out to my sister-in-law, Caitlin. She gave me the recipe for it. Or I had them at her house. And it was really good. My brother did smash burgers with the Big Mac sauce. It was really good. So I figured I'd come out today and make that for supper. The tide is going out. It's already dropped like three feet. If you guys aren't aware, Bay of Fundy has the highest tides in the world. It can go up and down depending where you're at. Uh, no problem at all. It's around like... 40 feet of water. It's a lot of power, a lot of water coming in and out.
Wendell, you already had your uh, supper, pal. So this is just shredded, uh, I shredded up some uh, pickles, and mustard, mayonnaise, ketchup, a little bit of garlic. That's it. Oh, I added some pepper too. Let's give her a go. I haven't really eaten anything today. A couple little snacks, uh, granola bar in the morning. Ate a handful of chips earlier, so haven't eaten anything today. Woo! Show. Mmm. hot temperature hot but uh, holy crap that tastes good I'm gonna enjoy this and uh, <clears throat> I'll get back to you guys in a bit. Cracked the new one here. We got the uh, Grand, ba Grand Falls Brewing Company. This is a high five pale ale. Let's give her a try. Yeah, a little bit fruity. Oh, give me that stack. Ah. Ah. Just dip down over the hill. I'm enjoying some uh, covered bridge, uh, all dressed chips, kettle cooked. Uh, covered bridge is a uh, New Brunswick brand, it's really good. Is all dressed a uh, Canadian thing, or you Americans have all dressed? I know you guys don't have like ketchup chips, which are pretty good. Oh, frickin' no window. Porcupine crawling up the tree right at my camp. Now I don't know what I'm gonna do with this dog.
Ugh. Come on, don't. You don't want to mess with him. Stop it. Well, sitting here drawing the fire and I heard some rustling. Sure enough, great big porcupine just came out. I don't know where he came from, but he's up, uh, which tree now? This tree right here. And then my tent is right over there, as you guys can see, the gray thing. I don't know, two trees over from my tent. Windows are here. I got them uh, on a leash now. Don't need, uh, don't need that tonight. Well, guys, it's getting pretty late there. I'm just going to let the fire burn down, burn out. Probably hit the hay. Pretty tired, up late last night, planning this trip. Trying to do some research, and I overplanned as usual, but it's all going pretty good. You can hear a few little animals moving around tonight. Wind is on, on high alert. But, uh, yeah, we'll probably head, head to bed here soon. See you guys in the morning. As if this night can't get any weirder, I was just about to go in my tent. There's a f***ing skunk in my tent. Guys, I can't believe this is real life. I left my tent open because Wendell was in there. I got a porcupine in the tree next to my tent, and now there's a skunk underneath my bed. What am I going to do with this now? I threw a few rocks to try to chase him out of there, but he's not moving. I don't know what to do. Just in case you guys thought I was lying to you. Oh, I got some of my stuff taken out, my sleeping bag and stuff, but I <sighs> don't want to lose this tent. Ooh, he looks pretty comfy. Threw some rocks on the other side, he won't run away. Well, guys, I don't know if uh, you can tell, but I'm all packed up. It's 11.16, it's supposed to start raining. I'm supposed to get like one to two mils. I don't want to wait here any longer. He doesn't seem like he wants to move. I left for half an hour with Wendell just to see if he would go, but yeah. He looks pretty comfy down there. He won't leave. So I gotta hope and pray he's gone by the morning. Uh, I left both ends of the tent open. I managed to get everything out except for obviously my tent and the uh, the uh, cot. I don't care too much about the cot that was cheap, but I'm really hoping he doesn't spray in that tent. It's expensive then and it's like twice the price now. Sorry Wendell, we're gonna sleep in the Tacoma tonight. He's not happy guys. Well guys, unfortunately for me, the skunk liked my camp more than me. And for whatever reason, he's too scared to leave. I have uh, both doors open, like I was saying. Uh, sorry, Wendell, we gotta sleep in the truck tonight. All right, a little bit of night riding. Didn't want to do this. I'm sure it'll be... I'm not terribly far from the truck. It's the only saving grace. If I was, I don't know. I really don't know what I would do if I was really far from my truck. Alright. Made it back to the truck. And the truck is here, which is perfect. So is the trailer. Let's get unpacked and go to sleep. All right guys, back at my truck, 12.30, I'm in the sleeping bag. I don't think I'm gonna get much sleep, but uh, we'll see what happens here. See you guys in the morning. Good morning guys. Had to wait for the rain to stop this morning. Uh, throwing on a little bit of coffee, it's eight in the morning. We'll make a coffee and maybe a quick breakfast, head back and uh, check out the tent, see if our little visitor's gone.
Well, as you guys can see, I got back late last night and I just kind of threw as much stuff in here as I could. It's kind of messy, but uh, it'll do for this morning. My uh, folding up GSI uh, coffee drip. These things work awesome. Folds up nice and small. For sleeping in a smaller truck, I don't feel that bad this morning. So got a little bit of uh, black pepper pork sausage. I just made them into patties and individually sealed them. Uh, kind of make them as like a little breakfast thing. They already have spices and stuff in them, but uh, these are really nice. I got this at uh, Mass Town Butcher in uh, Nova Scotia. All right guys, we got her all done. She's gonna be messy. Sausage and agar. Mmm. Delicious. All right, I'm gonna eat this, get stuff cleaned up. We're gonna hit the trail and go back and make sure he's gone. All right, guys, I gotta head back. Probably not gonna do a ton of filming because you guys already seen it. So, I'll catch up with these in a bit. So, just get a look at this rock ledge. It's not too bad on a four-wheeler or side-by-side. -side. Little challenging in a truck or a Jeep. But I think to my friend, Zach, he's called The Last Spike on Instagram. He's from uh, St. John. He came down this trail to the exact same place I was in a slightly modified Hyundai Tucson. <laughs> he was crazy with that thing, man. A ton of the spots I've been to, like Martinhead and everything, which is way easier to get to than this, but uh, he's been all there in a Hyundai Tucson. He took that thing everywhere. Uh, I think it ended up having like a catastrophic engine failure. <laughs> no knocking on the on the Hyundai, but uh, he came to his senses and got himself a really nice uh, lifted, kitted out uh, Toyota 4Runner. And he goes everywhere with that. I actually really recommend his channel. I'll uh, put a little link down in the description. Go check him out. He goes on awesome adventures. Now the old uh, engine block. I actually missed this on the, uh, the way through. I seen the truck here. Man, if uh, they gotta invent something so you can just touch it and see uh, exactly how that ended up here. Looks like a full-size truck, an old one. The metal's very thick. Its frame goes all the way back here. If you could just touch it, say if you had some special thing, you could touch it and see the story on how that ended up here. Early hillbilly overlanders. <laughs> Here. Guys, made it. Really wish.
wish I would have woken up here this morning, but hey, sometimes uh, plans change. Let's go see if this guy's left or not. Really hope he has. Thing under there. That's where he was, right in that back corner. Not there now. Well guys, I'm just gonna let my tent air dry there in the sun for a bit. I wanted to have a coffee here and enjoy the view this morning, but I wasn't able to, so I uh, I brewed my coffee back there and brought it with me in the old Yeti cup, so I'm gonna go enjoy coffee. All right guys, that's it for me. Got everything packed up. We were just about to hit the trail, head back to the truck. Uh, what an awesome time. Uh, despite the, the skunk issue, it was still the best. Uh, really good time and you gotta make the best of situations, right? You can't, I could have been a miserable prick and let it ruin my day, but uh, you know, just roll with the punches and make the best of it. Sure, I slept in my Tacoma and didn't get much sleep, but hey, got to come find this really cool spot. Uh, most people call this spot Cape Spencer. Cape Spencer is actually where I parked my truck. That's where the lighthouse is. This is, uh, well, this is Moore, Moore's Cove right there with the little beach. It's hard to get to. This spot here is actually called West Beach. It's, uh, in between, uh, I think it's Black's Harbor and Cape Spencer. It's almost halfway, but, uh, if you guys want to find it on the map, you can. If you guys want to use Google Maps or Players Ride Command, to find these trails you can. I found uh, Claire's Ride Command shows the W Beach Road, West Beach Road uh, coming in and it showed the trail down to here a lot better on uh, on Claire's Ride Command but it showed West Beach Road better on Google Maps. I like to use both and just kind of go back and forth and then ask people questions so yeah come check this place out make sure you pick up your trash I picked up a bunch of cans and stuff, an extra bottle, but uh, you know, we always try to keep these places clean. For the most part, it was really clean, so nice to see. We're gonna hit the trail there now and head back to the truck. Probably won't do too much filming, but uh, thanks a lot for watching. I really appreciate the support. If you guys like the video, make sure you give me a thumbs up, leave me a comment. I read them all, I respond to them all. I really appreciate that. and. Uh, yeah, feel free to share with your local ATV groups or on your Facebook page or whatever. Tell your friends. Thanks a lot, and I'll see you guys in the next one.